point that I'm gonna make is that that God is with you in the storm. Um, if you can't remember the disciples were with Jesus a boat and don't came and Jesus was sleeping. They woke him up and they said, don't you care we're about to die? Not realizing that he controlled what the thorn does. And if Jesus is asleep, on the boat that you tell you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Because he called the shots. I can't like when, when a boss of a company um, just sit in on the on how the business is doing on principle until so you're not realizing that the one who controls the business on the outcome is with you. So God is with you in the storm. Uh, that's the reason why you need to have faith in God because um, obedience to faith, you obey God, God, God provides for you. He keeps you, He sustains you until the promise is fulfilled. It- if you're going to look out, you got to be consistent in what you believe in God for. Do not doubt for doubting. Give pledge to the enemy to rob you. And so you don't want the enemy robbing you of what is rightfully yours. Okay. My last point is this. Running the race with excellence will be a testimony to glory of God. And everybody knows uh, the quality that goes with it. I have for a good fight, I have been in my course, and now what lay for me is treasures and a and not for me, but for all that to love him. And in my conclusion, I just want to reiterate that one of us we can have faith in God and believing what He says. That's safe for nothing. Not wavering in unbelief, standing on His word and thanking Him for victory. Then we can attain the promises that he has that have been made to us. So this is how you weather the storm that way. It's the end results that matters. When you are a child of the king, you will be tested. But it's the end results that matter. 
Look at your neighbor and say it's the end results. Let's go to Job. I mean, yes. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 1, 8 through 21. Now, there's going to come a time if you are a believer in Christ, you will be tested. Job lost everything from his servants on down to his children, and even down to his wife, who told him to just curse God and die. Now, Job may have been upset from the things that he was going through, but he never put his mouth on God. In fact, no matter what the, cir the circumstances was that Job went through, he still kept his faith. Um, saying in Job 13 and 15, 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Do we have some Job-like minds in here on today? When bills are piling up and you're running out of gas, do you still have your faith like Job had? <laughs> Ask yourself, could you handle what Job went through? Let me encourage you. No matter what the storm may look like, say, God, I still trust you. I paid my tithes first, but I'm short on my rent, but I'm believing God to make a way. Do we have some Job like mine in here on today? Let's not be like Job friends trying to figure it out on our own. And in the end, they get rebuked by God. We have to learn to stop trying to figure things out on our own and do things on our own when we know that we need God. Be like Job 27, 3, and 4, when he tells his friends, As long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say anything wicked, and my tongue will not utter lies. Let's receive the end results like Job. Even when he struggled and he lost everything, he kept fighting until the end. Continue to fight. Job 42 and 10. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. So I want to just encourage you, no matter what you go through, sometimes there's going to be a time where you're going to have to walk alone. But you have to continue to keep your faith and believe in God that he's going to make a way. As one of the songs used to say, 99 and a half won't do. So, you know, I have this little thing up here. It's called a word. And so it's bolded and it's the word submission. Okay. So this word means, <clears throat> and I quote, the state of being obedient. I know we haven't heard that today. Then the next part of the definition says it's the act of accepting authority or control of someone else. And then there's the other part we really love, the yielding control to a more powerful or authoritative entity. Yes, I know how we like. It's so quiet. Don't get quiet on me now. Like, okay, don't get quiet yet. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, the Lord was dealing with me because, you know, after, um, it was it last Sunday, I called myself getting up there to um, give a testimony. And, you know, I felt the anointing come on me. And he was talking about the yes. And what happens when you say yes. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then as soon as I got home, I was like, you're going to hear that again. It was like, <sniffs> so here we are. Why should we say yes? See, that's what the submission is. It's when we say yes to the Lord. And the Lord said that when the church, not this church, when the church body as a whole was operating in his glory, it's when the church said yes. When we stop saying yes, we allow the enemy to come in and do what he wants. He also said that these movements that we're in, they move with the time. They just keep moving. They don't stay because they're movements. It's not necessarily God's movement. So we have to move 
with him. How do we move with him? We have to say yes. Okay. Now, he says, why do we say yes? We say yes when we, he says, why? It's because we honor him when we do that. Okay. We let him know that we trust him when we say yes. Or that we're choosing, choosing to trust him. You know, sometimes saying yes is not easy. That's why we say, mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> we can live in peace. That's the reason why we say yes. Because when we, live, when we say yes to God, we're giving him the answer that he wants. You know, it's just like, a, like now this is what happens when we say yes. When we say, when we say yes, God delivers and he saves. Scripture, Psalms 1848. It reminded me of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I know that whenever people talk about things like saying yes, trusting God, being obedient, there's the intimidation that comes with it. And so we always have these, these reminders of in the word about what God does when we trust him. So they went into the fiery furnace. We all know that scripture, right? We know that story. But the part that the enemy does not want us to remember is that when we go into the fiery furnace, he turns the situation for our good. He gives us favor when we go out. So the people that were our enemies now can't wait to buy us things for some reason. I just don't know why. But the Lord told me to buy this for you. That's what God does. He changed the mind of the king on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's behalf. So if he can do that for those three Men who just did what the Lord said by saying yes. Imagine what he can do for the rest of us. Okay. So God does not want us to be intimidated. And see, the enemy is so clever. And he ain't big. He ain't nothing. He ain't, mm. Anyway, but he's so good at intimidating the believer. He gets us to focus on the things that are not the main point. The main point is that God delivers what we get stuck on? Well, they had to go on the fire furnace. Oh, there was a line. Oh, my God. And um, um, I don't know because, you know, that was a lot. He, God had to go on the cross. I don't know if I could do that. Oh, my God. And Job had boils, boils, boils everywhere. He was just sick. But the enemy says that kind of stuff to remind us so that we can take the step back. But God says, don't forget my promises. He says, remember that I'm there for you. He says, remember that I'm your refuge and I'm your strength. And see, 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 all of the movements say it doesn't take all that. But you know, when you open your mouth and you start glorifying God, your situation changes. I didn't mean to go there, but your situation changes and then God becomes greater. So then when I feel like I'm not sure if I can take the next step, it's that praise that gives me the strength. And the strength of God to move forward. So don't give up your worship and your praise. That's what the enemy wants. He knows those tools that work. So we have to keep moving forward. Keep pressing forward. Okay. The last thing that God reminded me is that when we say yes, he honors us. He, he blesses your generations. And some of us have our own children we just like lord when are they coming in he said when you say yes i'll bless your generations there were generational blessings that came from abraham to isaac isaac just happened to be a recipient of abraham's blessings so when we say yes our children are blessed okay so anyway before i get done i just want to pray because the lord said that some of us um have me, uh, when it comes to the will, the will to do, the will to say yes, some of us have been through so much until that we justify our reasoning for saying yes. We're very spiritual, but at the end of the day, it's still no. That's it. It's just no. Okay. So if you're like, well, Lord, I don't know. I don't know if I have time. Just say no. Just, I mean, 
he knows what it means. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, but I'm just want to pray because God wants us to keep it real. We hurt. We don't understand. We, we have issues with trusting God. And so he doesn't want us to feel like just because he wants us to say yes, that we won't, he won't be there to help us. So he's there to help us through the process. So I'm just going to pray really quickly. Um, and then I'm going to move on, move out the way. Dear Father, we just thank you. And Father, we thank you because we want to be in your will. We want to, we want to accept the plan that you have for us. Lord, thank you for healing our will. You're always with us. And you do, we do not need the answers because you have them. Help us to trust you with our lives each day. Our desire is to love you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for helping us to stick and to move with you in every season of our lives. We thank you for being the author and the finisher of our faith. Your plan for our lives is great, and we choose to follow your plan. And Lord, because we are choosing to say yes, we know that that you will be there with us. You'll be there to guide us. You'll be our refuge. No matter what season, no matter what situation we're in, we know that you're there to be, you're there with us. Even in the darkest times, God, you are there. You're not leaving us alone. We don't have to wonder if, if we, if you're there, God, we know that you're there. And for this reason, we say, thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for healing us. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to say yes in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.